morning YouTubers, this is Jeremiah, aka Mopar Man. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Today's topic is the Dodge, or I should just say Mopar Thermoquad Carburetors. Uh, we're going to go over some basics with them today. A lot of you guys already know a lot of the stuff, some of you don't. Um, so, let's just jump right in and I'll show you what I've been working on. Okay, so, as you can see, I got two, come on camera, focus, there we go, as you can see, I've got one um, model of Thermoquad over here, and I got this one inside the bottom of this, uh, this is my uh, cleaning tray. And uh, what I did is I used a combination of uh, that bottle, the purple bottle of Super Clean, mixed with uh, a spray bottle of Dawn Professional Grade uh, degreaser. Comes in a bottle. Uh, I bought it at Menards. There might some other places might carry, but anyway, um, I let a lot of the stuff soak. Uh, I bought these cheap containers because this has got a lid. Now the lid won't fit down over this, but anyway, um, I pour pour the stuff all over this, and um, that all this other junk in here. And I flip them over, let it soak, and and as I'm pouring it on there, and then what I'll do is I, when it sits there and soaks for a while, um, I'll come in with a uh, toothbrush. And then somewhere around here, I have like a little skinny uh, painter's brush. Yeah, like I use this one right here. And it gets down all inside everything. You just got to make sure once in a while a, a little bristle might fall off or something. But anyway, I, I uh, after the parts have been sitting for quite a while, I uh, pour some more on and I agitate it by scrubbing everything. Flipping it over, doing the same thing, I do that, and then uh, for all the little intricate parts, even stuff like these here that unscrew, I put everything in another separate container, which this is only like a buck or two at Menards, and uh, everything except for the uh, old style plastic floats, foam floats, whatever you want to call them, uh, gets put in here and filled up and then these just sit in there and soak um these have already been cleaned these have a little bit of a flash rust on them a little bit but uh nothing that's a little scotch uh, automotive scotch bright can't take care of um clean the parts up really good um this one here was a uh, almost looked like somebody had set it in the bottom of the ocean or the river um, it was just caked on with stuff here especially all around all of this stuff I mean this got thoroughly soaked for a good several hours as you can see how clean it is compared to what it was um, yeah, it's, you can still see some little but uh, I'll probably go back over and clean them up again, and whatever you can't get with them, it won't just won't come off. You can use a uh, Dremel tool. But, uh, I think these carbs at one time have been remanufactured or rebuilt by somebody else because some of the parts in them looks fairly new. I've never seen them with the ana red anodized caps. Uh, this is new. There's a lot of odd, odds and ends, but anyway, this one was really filthy, like especially down, let's see here. Come on, light. There we go. That'd probably help you guys about, uh, anyway. Um, down in here was really nasty. And now what I do is I make sure to, uh, I run hot water, and because some of that, uh, degreaser is a little acoustic or corrosive whatever you want to call it 
and I run hot water and a brush, the same brush, and go down in all the cracks and crevices and scrub this stuff because what happens if you don't get a lot of this stuff off, and I didn't want to use like a carbon choke cleaner in the house and stuff like that. Uh, I do all those type of chemicals outside, um, even if I got to soak something in gasoline, but anyway. Um, if you're not careful and this dries out, it'll flash corrode. I mean, it'll get this white talc powder consistency stuff on there. Um, th this doesn't have it, but, um, but anyway, there's that. And, um, like I said, this one was pretty nasty. Um, and then whatever the parts before and after, even if they're filthy, this is what I do. I uh, put the uh, part numbers of, from everything on the bags. I use freezer bags, cheap freezer bags. And... Um, this is the much better one. I think this is like a uh, seven, late 70s model Thermoquad. Uh, somewhat emissions. But as you can see, it cleaned up quite nice. A lot cleaner than, a lot cleaner than that one. Here's the base plate. And like I said, I didn't sandblast none of these. I didn't bead blast any of these. These come pretty clean themselves. And like I said, I use everything from like Q-tips to um, all kinds of different little things to get stuff cl uh, cleaned up down in the little cracks and crevices and whatnot. Um, but uh, anyway, um, since these are emissions carbs, a lot of these excess tubes... Um, normally what I do is I go to O'Reilly's and buy, Moroso makes it too, um, if I, if I can't find those O'Reilly's, um, back there where they have their, uh, pre-cut sections of heater hose in the packages, you'll find, um, a little packet of different colored assorted vinyl vacuum caps, I prefer those over the rubber ones, the, the Dorman or whatever those, uh, fix it right, do it right, whatever brand. Of the rubber dry rots um, or they turn hard as a rock I'm gonna get rid of this one um, I'll either put the caps on these or if I just don't if they just don't need them and I want to clean them up I'll actually pull these plugs out these uh, tubes out and I've got a big assorted uh, threaded allen head plugs I'll just, I got taps and stuff like that and drills and whatnot, and I'll just plug these off with the uh, Allen head threaded plugs. Anyway, um, there's that. Um, also, in this video, um, you can take a uh, steel ruler and um, go across lengthways. I'm just using this as an example. Uh, crossways why not to check to make sure these aren't warped um, I think I like I think I dodged a bullet on this one they're they're not warped and then what you want to look for is uh, hairline cracks what I like to do is take these outside and I will set this up where there's a gap underneath like like this where I can watch and without spraying it all over the place I will fill um, the uh, fuel um, I can't remember the proper name for these, these uh, bowls or whatever you want to call them it looks like a little uh, um, 125th scale um, oil pans for the, the motors, these little caps. Anyway, I'll fill this all up, let it sit, and I'll look for um, drips. And you can either use gasoline, 
or you can use uh, rubbing alcohol or something thin like that it's really thin um, don't use like or, or like PB blaster or some shit like that anyway um, check that check around here for cracks and then uh, especially for this um, just don't trust these look for, for drips around these as well there could be a pinhole from where it cracked anything um, let's see here and then what I do is um, I'll take a I'll go to like Dollar General and buy a pack of cheap fingernail files that has the actual sandpaper uh, grit a sand grit on each side the, the smooth and the rough side and I'll come in here on each side of, of where this epo uh, factory epoxy is and sand on that um, just enough. I don't sand and go start to go into the plastic, but just enough to rough the surface up and I'll come out a little ways. Um, here, I'll show you. I start from here and work my way out a little bit. And then I do the same thing in here. And then I'll gently touch with some sandpaper the epoxy itself. And then what I do is I come in. You can either get this on Amazon.com or places like Ace Hardware. You'll have to order it through Ace Hardware. They show it available online. But most of the time the Ace Hardware stores don't carry it in the store. Um, this is the stuff right here to get white marine techs this is a, a, a container full of white paste comes with this uh, amber hardener colored hardener um, I usually do like um, depends on the size of, of the thing you're trying to repair I'll do a quarter size glob of this stuff and then one or two drops of this and um, mix it up really good and then what I do is I come in here with like a uh, a q-tip with the, with the uh, cotton off the end of it and I'll dabble on here and I'll, and I'll get it on on the old epoxy and on both sides of the epoxy and then once it starts to sit up you can smear it and spread it around and you, you don't want to get too much sticking out or globs because this has to be able to sit down in there but as a safety precaution so I don't have leaks in case I don't find I don't want to put this one on not have any leaks put this one on and then 100 miles down the road one of these decides to crack and pop off and cause fuel leaks so anyway I, i'll put a thin layer around this seam set it let it sit for 48 hours and uh what's cool about this stuff is it's sandable but they did a test on a carburetor or a fuel pump or whatever it was on the uh, Buick website. I, I happened to stumble across one day looking to try to figure out what they used from the factory to glue these little caps on. And the guy says, oh, Mar white marine techs. And he, uh, he said that he read an article or watched a video or saw it in person or something somewhere down the road years ago. They had a leaking item they did the epoxy they let it set up 48 hours a few days whatever the warmer the better the quicker the stuff cures anyway they submerged it in gasoline for 48 hours it never peeled off it never leaked um, it never became soft it it just does exactly like this factory epoxy does um, and I've used it, uh, my mom found a used little miniature rototiller and the old plastic gas tank had a crack and a hole on one side. All I did was I took, uh, uh, a little short square piece of gauze pad, took it apart, 
took the cotton out of it and I used the actual uh, mesh cotton the fiber mesh uh, mixed up a bunch of this and uh, put the epoxy around where it has the hole on the tank and then filled the uh, mesh with epoxy laid it over the top let that cure come back and put another layer of epoxy over the top of that and filled it in and then let it sit for another 48 hours and we're still my mom is still using the rototiller and it's been two years um, no leaks no cracks no nothing hard still hard as a rock anyway also um, once you check one other little spot that gets overlooked is uh, where's my uh, crap hold on a minute I'll just use the end of a bottle rocket stick because it's red and then it's easy right here make sure you thoroughly inspect this to make sure it doesn't have a crack going through here from here to here on each one of these and I was thinking that if I was ever to come across one that had a crack on it I would put some of this marine text down in there and then try to find maybe a router bit or something that's flat on the bottom and as wide as this and slowly work my way down keeping it flat and slowly grinding the material out to where it would leave a thin flat layer of epoxy on here and fill up the cracks underneath that way you could reuse this um, anyway I'll be this is just the, an introduction to what I'm I'm fixing I got these for like 25 bucks a piece one of them is a late 70s model thermoquad the other is a, a early to mid 80s thermoquad um, I'm thinking that this one because of the way this is set up is the 70s and the way this one's set up uh, is 80s based off the screw-ins also um, I got a couple of uh, got a couple of links if you guys are needing good quality parts for to fix these thermoquads, go to Mike's Carburetor Parts, and it's uh, www.carburetor/parts.com. He's on eBay. He sells stuff on eBay, but he's got his own website, and he's got almost anything and everything for any type of carburetor. He's got I think he still has jets, he's got uh, rods, he's got um, fuel floats, he's got the gasket kits, all kinds of good quality stuff. He, he has a couple bucks more, but uh, he's got the, uh, the brass replacements for these, these, these uh, pieces of junk on there for like 12 bucks a piece, I think. Um, the kits... You can type in your carb kit, or your carb number, and by carburetor or carb number, or whatever. And then he's got uh, if, uh, a separate list of you, you type in the carb number, and it'll tell you what year it is, what it, what it goes on, what kind of engine, whatnot. But this is the back of the base plate, and uh, these are the numbers you're going to need to know. This one here. And then there, the other identification number is right there, that 2363 number. But mainly it's the base plate number on the back. Anyway, the other one is uh, Daytona Parts Company out of uh, New Sim Samir Samirna. I guess that's, I guess I'm saying that if I'm saying that right. Beach, Florida. S-M-Y-R-N-A, Florida. 
And they also have, and it's also Daytona Parts, all one word, dot com. I'll put all this in the description below. And then the last one, he has his own YouTube channel and he has a Facebook page for Thermoquad. Thermoquads only and tech, Thermoquad tech only. Um, so if you join the group, that's only what they talk about on there. Uh, rebuilding, modifications, um, diagnostics, that sort of thing. Um, uh, modifications, which you can do to your Thermoquad, all that sort of thing. Anything related to Thermoquad, he's got it on there. And he's very picky about what you say and what you post on there. Otherwise, you could get kicked off. Anyway, um, his name is Mike Manley, M-A-N-L-E-Y. He's got his YouTube videos, like I said, and you, the way you can tell his uh, his user uh, pick is a uh, the Canadian flag. It's uh, the red and white with the maple leaf. Um, even the one on uh, Facebook. Um, if you have any tech questions for him. He knows these carbs in and out way better than I do. Uh, but like I said, I'll post all that in the link below. Also, let me take this off. Also, uh, all to all you new subscribers and pre, uh, older subscribers, or uh, people just checking out my videos in general, if you, like this, if you like what I have, whether it be the new videos that come out or check out the old archives with different stuff I cover, um, it's just not Mopar stuff. Um, feel free to subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. It's free. You can unsubscribe anytime you want to. But if you do subscribe, if you want to make it, make it a solid subscription, at least post a comment on one of my videos, even if it's a new one or an old one. That way it anchors your subscription to my channel. Like I said, but it, it's not making you you can cancel any time it, you know it doesn't cost you anything but it it the, the youtube algorithms if if you subscribe they like to come through once in a while on people's channels and they'll just get rid of a few subscribers at random i don't know why they do that but um like i said and then i also have in the link posted below if you want to help out my channel by since this is extremely low budget and I can only do this stuff from paycheck to paycheck when my funds allow it. Um, if you want to see see me help get you know see me get something built a little quicker, um, I've got a uh, PayPal account you can send donations to. I don't get to do lives uh, right now. I don't have stuff set up for that just yet. Um, I did a, t uh, a live a live test a couple years back, a couple different ones. But, uh, and I was just using my smartphone. But anyway, I rambled on long enough. If you have any questions, anything, feel free to ask. Um, like I said, post them comments, especially if you subscribe. Or just a emoji face or something that gives a thumb up. At least that you shows that you res responded. Anyway, until next time, stay tuned for more Thermoquad stuff. I'm out.